child is not going to remain hidden. First revealed to the shepherds by the angels, and then revealed by the shepherds to the people of Bethlehem, and then revealed to the world as represented by those wise men from the east. What we read here in Luke chapter 2 is going to be our meditation theme and will be the text for that meditation. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of our God. And we sing about the shepherds, hymn number 345.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Savior Jesus Christ who once came to this world to live among us, to live for us, to die in our place and to rise victorious for our hope, life, and salvation. Amen. I heard the other day, that goes back to I think December 14th when I heard this, on XM Sirius Radio. I don't know how many of you have that. But I was listening and a commercial came up. And in that advertisement they were saying, there's only a certain amount of days left till Christmas and you better get these sales and buy this stuff. And because you want to have a very good Christmas celebration. The more the gifts, the bigger the gifts, the more the fun. You know how that goes. And I got to thinking, Christmas time for most people of the world is not really what God intended when he first sent his son. It's there for all kinds of parties and family gatherings. And I see a lot of family gathered uh, here today with people that live here, you traveled, whatever. That's a good thing. We wouldn't say that that's bad. Giving gifts, receiving gifts, we wouldn't say that's bad. Maybe the receiving is better. <laughs> but I can tell you that Christmas time oftentimes brings up great stress, heartache for people. Think of those who lost a spouse this last year uh, to death. This Christmas is not an easy time for that person. Or think about all of the stresses that come with buying and buying and buying, especially in the economy that we see this very minute, and then not have the income or the resources to pay it. And the debt spiral goes. And then the worry, how am I going to get rid of all this debt? I guess you know what I'm talking about, don't you? See, for many people in the world, Christmas is really hidden. Christ is hidden. They cannot see the purpose, the reality, or the blessing of Christmas. And just in case you think, well, yeah, I believe that Jesus is my Savior, so these things don't affect me, I'll tell you a story. This happened when I was a child. And I heard my mother say this, probably not more than once. I'm the oldest of five kids. We're all within seven and a half years to the day in age. You can imagine the stress for her. And I heard her say, I can't wait for Christmas to be over. Really? Now, my mother, she's with the Lord now. She believed in Jesus as her personal savior. It was the stress and the frustration of all of the junk around Christmas that got to her. Probably me too. <laughs> but the fact remains. It's only by God's grace that Christ, the Christ of Christmas, has been revealed so that we can be in a place like this today. Yes, we're going to party with our families. That's good. But we're going to keep it in the perspective of the manger and the cross and the empty tomb. Now, you heard the text for our meditation this night already. It's verses uh, 8 through 20 of Luke chapter 2, the shepherd's story. So I'm not going to reread that now. But here we see the hidden Christ revealed by angels. Now, you know what an angel is, right? Now, I've never seen one, though, at least that I'm aware of. But God sent his angels as messengers, usually connected with some sort of deliverance from the Lord. The word angel in the Greek, angelos, they even named a city of angels. Angelos actually means messenger. Angels were primarily God's messengers to reveal things to people that they would not be able to get on their own. So we see angels show up at the birth of Christ to let shepherds know about the Savior's birth. And we see angels show up on Easter Sunday to tell the women, he's not here, he's risen, just like he said. Angels were messengers to reveal what was hidden, just like the Word of God itself. Now think of Gabriel, you know that angel, right? 
That angel went in the power of God. That's what his name means. And he came to Zechariah to announce the birth of John the Baptist. He showed up in Mary's house and told her that she would be the mother of the Savior. Of course, it would be a miraculous birth that God's son would take on human flesh by God's power and God's plan. How would Mary know that this child inside of her, their nine months, would be God if the angel hadn't told her? Yes, the hidden Christ was revealed by angels. Do not be afraid, shepherds, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior was born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Now when the, angels first, the angel first gave that message to the shepherds, remember what their reaction was? I know something. Well, they were sore afraid. Remember that from the King James? They were sore afraid. No, the Greek word says they were terrified. They were terrorized by this angel's message. But their terror was soon, soon turned to joy. It was flip-flopped because the message of the Savior's coming brought joy to those outcasts, those shepherds, those people on the bottom rung of society of their day. The angels revealed that message to shepherds and you know, I think if we really want to analyze our lives a little bit, aren't there times when you feel a little bit afraid of life? Or is it just me? You know, where something's happening to you or in you maybe with an illness or, or to your family and, and it gets you kind of <sighs> afraid for what's going to happen tomorrow? I know when I was told I had cancer last year, oh yeah. Now what's coming next? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? But the Lord God has said to us that even though you have not lived the life that I created you to live, even though you have not lived the perfect life before me that I demand, still I sent a son because I loved you even though you ran from me. All of these things that happen in our lives are reminders to us. Yeah, they might bring terror to us. We might be afraid of tomorrow sometimes. But God has removed that because he is taking care of the sins of the world. And that means yours and mine. They were with Jesus on the cross. Without the cross, Christmas doesn't mean anything. But with the cross, it means everything. Every day is Christmas. And so we have the big reveal the big reveal. I think that's kind of interesting. You know, you see some of those shows on TV, you know, those uh, reality shows, and at the end they have a big reveal, like, who's the masked singer? But it's interesting, isn't it? With young people, uh, God blesses a young couple, a young married couple with a child, and after they've been pregnant a little while, they go get this ultrasound thing, and then they can figure out what the gender is of the child. And then they have parties today. The big reveal. <laughs> if we would have done that with our second child, we would have been wrong. She didn't turn out to be a boy. But with Christ, the great reveal through the angels to shepherds was that a Savior has been born to you. is Christ the Lord. And just so that the shepherds got it right, they added, and this will be a sign to you, you'll find the baby wrapped in claws, those swaddling clothes lying in a manger, in a feed trough for, for, for animals. The king of creation had a humble birth, but an important birth to be sure. So what was the, the reaction of the shepherds to this message? Do you remember? Hmm. Inquiring minds want to know. Hey, let's go and see this thing that the Lord has made known to us, the Lord revealed to us. And they hightailed it into the city of Bethlehem and found the baby. And just so they got the right one, he was identified ahead of time for these shepherds. And what do they do when they get there? They worship. It's kind of like what we're doing tonight, isn't it? We hear the message of the angel again. Christ is born, and we come together to worship our God, to bow our hearts in front of his manger, even though he grew up, of course, and he 
already won the victory. And we celebrate that great reveal. The shepherds did something else. When they had seen him, they told others the message they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed by what the shepherds said to them. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Does Christmas ever get old to you? It doesn't to me. If you come to our house, you can tell that. There's stuff all over the place. But we don't need it because we have the revelation of God and his word that tells us it. So we share that message with others. We tell everyone that we see Christmas means something, something much more than gifts and parties. It's the Savior born. So this revelation by angels to shepherds is for us. It's for you and me. What does Mary do with all of this? Did you think about that? Here's the mother of a baby, gives birth after traveling from up north down south. And by the way, there's nothing in scripture that indicates that she rode a donkey. That was a thing made up, okay? She may have, may not have, but that's still a long journey for a, a woman in the late stages of her pregnancy to go down to the city and then the baby's born right away when they get there. Ay. And then shepherds show up. You know, when my kids were born, they were in the hospital for a little bit longer than they are today. And relatives showed up and looked through the window and wave and Google eyes. But here they get shepherds show up. Strangers to Mary and Joseph, but certainly not strangers to the Savior. And Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The word means they contem she contemplated all of this. She, she thought it through. Now, how does, how does this puzzle all fit together? The, the message of Gabriel, you know, now the shepherds and the angel's message. How does that all fit together? She pondered it. My dear friends, tonight I would like you to ponder with me again Christmas. That God in love for you, none of us deserve this, sent his son as the greatest Christmas present of, of all his history. He was truly born in time, in a place. Luke sets the parameters of that. Under Caesar Augustus, Quirinius was the governor. A real birth for a real problem. The problem of sin, which always leads to death. But tonight, as you ponder with me, like Mary, this message that God revealed his son so that we would know him who saves, him who carried our burden and endured our trials and our punishment, a savior who said it's finished when he completed the work for you and for me so that we can rejoice this night with a savior who rose from the dead and is victorious and is coming again. If you take nothing away from tonight, take this with you as God's gift to you, revealed to you, Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you, he rose for you, and he will be with you forever. For me, Christmas remains one of the greatest days of the year. And for me, it means that Christmas goes on every single day of the year. Believers are always Christmas Christians. They are Good Friday Christians. They are Easter Christians. And that is the most important thing you can ever hear, that God would ever make known to you that Jesus Christ is your Savior from sin, death, and the power of the devil. And because of that, you are his God grant you that gift day after day until you're with him, celebrating the Christmases of heaven. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, bless your word that we have heard. Continue to send your Holy Spirit to make things known to us from your word about our Savior, about ourselves, and about your great love for us. We pray that this Christmas gift might keep on giving as you daily reveal to us your grace. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Now we're going to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And while we're singing, the offering will be taken. That goes for mission outreach. And um, then the ushers will also follow up and hand out the candles, which will be lit when we get to Silent Night, okay? and join with me in the prayer for Christmas Eve. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you fulfilled all of your ancient promises and sent us a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Your Son left the glory of heaven and became flesh of our flesh. He became our brother so that through him we might become your children. We marvel at his grace that Though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that we through his poverty might become rich. We are indeed rich, for we have peace with you and access to your throne in every need. Dear Savior, give us a simple childlike faith that sees your glory even in your lowliness. Help us all to rejoice in your birth. In sincere faith, we join the song of the angels, share the delight of the shepherds, and adore you with the magi. May the truth, love, and redemption that you have brought dwell in our hearts and lives. Like Mary, may we keep all these things and ponder them in our hearts. And since you came for all people, help us share the good news of great joy we have in you. As you have shown us your glory and have revealed it to us this holy evening, So one day bring us into your glory in heaven, where we will take our places among the saints and angels. There we will forever praise and glorify you for the grace and mercy you have shown to us sinners. Hear us, O Lord, for the sake of your name, and in that name we also pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And as we, uh, before we sing, we'll get the candles going and then we'll sing Silent Night with the lights out. The ushers are going to come up each row and you pass it down, but don't turn the lighted one over, turn the unlighted one, okay? Okay. 